New York, from point A to B, home to work and back again. A place of opportunity for some and scarcity for the rest. Like pigeons, we race for breadcrumbs and fly to shelter if there's any left. In the mist, there's something that represents this city's identity. Does the city define us? Do we define it? A glimpse of it is found in the ground where the subways are the city's main transportation where millions arrive daily. A high fare to ride, but we're forced to accept it. The New York mindset tells us the alternatives cost more. Outsiders think lights and skyscrapers from postcards and television broadcasts. Hidden are the boutiques, family restaurants, old churches, and corner bodegas. Times Square buildings reach the sky littered with corporate advertisements. Who is Times Square for? Who is the city for? Who does the city serve? We can lose ourselves in the non-stop routine. Appreciating the city fades away without us even knowing it. Consciousness turns to a struggle to keep steady paychecks, drowning in congestion. Cultural, not commercial, melting pot, it doesn't come free, it's priceless. Pick an object to describe New York City. Lights. Lights, yeah. And why? Okay, why would you pick oh. lights? Uh, because it's like... As you can see, like a bunch of lights, like just pop out of nowhere to be like Times Square and all that. Do you like living in New York City? Yes. Like I love having a lot of people around me and having everyone push me and all that. <laughs> have you lived here your whole life? Yeah, I have. Do you feel like um, media representations of New York City, like you know, songs about like the bright lights and you know, depictions of New York City are accurate? Like for people that come here expecting, you know, the New York City they see in movies, do you think that's accurate or no? Yeah, I think it's accurate because they mostly say like lights and like everyone pushing and shoving each other and garbage all over the floor, so it's pretty accurate. Thank you.